Well, sickle cell disease is a chronic lifelong disorder causing hemolytic anemia and also episodes of intermittent pain. Um, and at the moment, we have really very limited treatment options. We have one licensed drug um, in the UK, hydroxyurea. Um, glutamine has just been licensed in the States. And we just have, that's the only drug we have. It's been here for two decades. Or we have uh, blood transfusion therapy. So at the moment, many patients have uh, intermittent episodes of pain throughout their whole life. They have chronic organ damage that gets worse and worse as they get older. And the problem is, is we have an aging population of patients, they have this um, increasing burden of chronic disease, including renal failure, high risk of stroke, pulmonary hypertension, respiratory disease, and we really have no way of tackling the underlying cause of the disease at the moment. So um, Voxelator is a novel oral once daily agent that acts as an inhibitor of haemoglobin polymerization. So basically with the abnormal sickle haemoglobin it forms long chains of abnormal haemoglobin within the red cell and they lead to red cell membrane damage. And what the Voxelator does is it acts like the root of the problem and it stops that uh, polymerization of, of the abnormal haemoglobin. So these abnormal polymers then lead on to both vasoocclusion but also to hemolytic anemia. And Voxelator is the first drug really that's targeted this way of stopping the, um, the sickling occurring and the first one to tackle the hemolytic, the, the, the hemolytic anemia and therefore the um, chronic organ damage that we see with sickle cell disease. So the HOPE study was a phase three study of adults and adolescents with sickle cell disease uh, treated with Voxelator um, at two different treatment doses, 1500 and 900, compared with a placebo. It included um, patients with at least one and not more than 10 pain crises, VOCs, in the last year, and they were allowed to be on hydroxyurea as long as they were a stable dose. It followed them up um, for, well, we've shown the 24-week um, time point in this study, and the primary endpoint was the uh, proportion of patients with a haemoglobin of one gram per deciliter or more increase at 24 weeks. And we looked at secondary endpoints, including hemolytic markers, mean haemoglobin change, and VOC. So um, the results have just been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and we have um, 200 and almost 300 patients included in the intention to treat an analysis, and 229 in the, the protocol. So what the primary outcome showed, which was the proportion of patients with more than one gram per deciliter increase, was that in the Voxelator 1500 milligram group, nearly 60% of patients had a one gram per deciliter haemoglobin increase or more. So that's not only for statistical significance, but also very clinically significant, because we think a haemoglobin increase of that much is likely to impact on the long-term outcomes of sickle cell disease. Um, we also saw an increase in the 900 milligram arm um, of 38% had an increase of one gram per deciliter or more. And again, that was statistically significant. So, and the secondary endpoints show a reduction in hemolysis and all the, the main markers um, and a statistically significant decrease in both um, indirect bilirubin and percent, percentage of reticulocyte counts in the Voxelator 1500 milligram group. So we saw an improvement in haemoglobin and a reduction in, in hemolysis with Voxelator 1500 milligrams, which is you know, both statistically significant and likely to have um, potentially a, a long-term action on the chronic organ damage we see in sickle cell disease. So between the, the three groups, we, saw, we had no major safety concerns at all. So uh, serious adverse events were the same in the Voxelator 1500, 900 and placebo group. Um, there was, was no increase in um, discontinuation rates between the, the three groups and there were four fatalities but they were not related to, to treatment. In the other adverse events, the main ones were headache, diarrhoea and nausea. Nausea was increased in the Voxelator group by about twofold but it was mild and mostly self-limiting, so no major safety concerns. We also looked at um, VOC rates um, as part of the endpoint and safety. So, there was, so despite the really sustained increase in haemoglobin, we saw no increase in VOC. And in fact, there, there were less VOCs in the Voxelator group, um, although that doesn't meet statistical significance, and that'll be analyzed again at 72 weeks. So that's really reassuring that Voxelator does not cause an increase in blood viscosity. The other thing we looked at was tissue oxygenation. Uh, so we measured um, uh, with operating levels through, through the trial. And even in patients who had a very high level of Voxelator um, occupancy, we didn't see any increase in evaporation at all, and that implies there was no uh, uh, detrimental effect on tissue oxygenation.
So at the moment, we're going to continue the HOPE study. Uh, it, um, patients are going out 72 weeks on trial, then they're going to go on to an open label trial. So there's that data coming. Then there's the HOPE Kids trial is up and running. That's looking at children as young as four years uh, with the drug. Um, and then that's going to be expanded to HOPE Kids 2 study probably next year, which is going to look at cerebral blood flow uh, in, in children with sickle cell disease. Um, and then it's going to go to the FDA looking for approval sometime in 2020.